What is going on? This is episode nine of the High Dev Perspective. My name is Devonair, and welcome. You know, I just want to jump right into today's episode. Uh, I want to discuss something that's typically overlooked regarding our spiritual and personal development, and that happens to be spiritual warfare. Now, before I go ahead and get started on today's topic, I do want to say this. Spiritual warfare is not about fighting the darkness. It's about embracing the light and the light within. I felt that I should start off the episode with that quote because there tends to be so much, I don't want to say stigma, but there tends to be a lot of information that could be misleading when it comes to the actual spiritual warfare Spiritual warfare is the struggle between the forces of light and darkness within and around us. It's not just about external conflicts, but it's also about internal battles that we face on a daily basis. It's important that I highlight and mention the importance of being self-aware when involved in spiritual warfare um, within our lives. And this awareness helps us recognize the negative energies or influences that may be trying to divert us from our true path. Now, when I started my spiritual journey, you know, as I continued to awaken, what I started to experience within my reality was there was a lot of my shadow of course, because, you know, there's a lot of shadow work that's involved that was creeping up to the surface. And when I say the surface, it was it was a battle. Let me give you a perfect example. As you're as you're all aware, I'm gay. <laughs> Ain't no secret. <laughs> but <laughs> um, my sexuality. With within myself was. It was a diff it was a battle. And not only was it a battle, it was a battle within myself because one, I was already in a space of, I don't want to say denial, but I was not living my authentic truth uh to myself and to my family. And so I was so accustomed to putting on a facade in front of certain people, and then the ones that I, you know, the ones that were fully aware of, you know, me being gay. I just let it all hang out. And so what typically happened or what happened within my reality was, you know, I got to a point where I was tired of being or pretending to be something that I'm not anymore. And that tends to happen once you reach a level within your journey. And so when I finally came out to, you know, my family, my friends, the world, hell, everybody, I started to develop more and more of my my traits within my masculine and feminine feminine energy. And I've always had a external demeanor about me, you know. And when it comes to my feminine side, I didn't want I didn't want to embrace it. And so, you know, like I said, as I'm becoming more truthful and more authentic to myself and showing up to myself in a more truthful way, I started to question my femininity. I used to hide it, you know. To make a long story short, there was, because I had opened up the door to both mas my masculine and feminine energy now being more comfortable with myself, I started to develop more feminine traits and it got to a point where I genuinely thought that I may be trans. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, I was, like I said, opening up the door toward my feminine energy and 
it was nice. It was liberating. And it got to the point where it was over liberating. And I started to question myself and my beliefs like, wait, am I like, I know I'm gay, you know, but like, am I supposed to be living my life differently? And when I say differently, and I'm going to be fully transparent, would I be more comfortable and freer, even more freer if I were to live my life as a woman? So that was a battle that I had to go through and it was, it was a lot going on and I do consider myself a divine feminine. I do. And the reason why I consider my, I consider myself a divine feminine is because I do hold a lot of feminine traits about me. I have a higher level of intuition. I, am very nurturing. I have all of these qualities and I've developed a lot of these qualities through my mother. And my mother has always been the, she's always been in my life. You know, I, like I said, I didn't have my father growing up. Um, not until up until I was, you know, of an adult age, but I developed so many of these strong characteristics and I was, I grew up with a lot of women, you know, my role models were a lot of women, my grandmother, my great grandmother, my mother, you know? And so I've developed all of these qualities as far as becoming nurturing and, and caring and, you know, trusting my intuition on certain things. I developed it quickly within my reality and within my journey. And this was well before I even started my healing journey. And so, again, that's this is how I know that I am considered a divine feminine. And I've always had a hard time with my masculine side. And the only thing that's masculine at the time that was, you know, within my reality was my my physical feature, my avatar, you know. And so... I used to always say, you know, my avatar is very strong, but like inside, I just have a heart of gold. I love love, which is the God honest truth. I, I genuinely just adore and love love. And there was this battle that I was going through, you know, once I opened up my my healing journey with spirituality. And so um, I say that to say, what I realized within my the warfare of that was that there was so much in my head. I was I was believing a narrative and I was trusting and I was doing so much research and trusting that their reality and how they experienced was was my reality, you know, you know. And as far as like and I and don't get me wrong, I have nothing against anyone who uh, is of another gender. I genuinely love my LGBTQ plus community for me personally it was something that I really did question I was just like yo maybe this is what would make me more happier but in all it turns out it was more so a balance the universe was trying to balance out both my masculine and feminine energies for me and now I'm in this space where I identify as a man and not only do I identify as a man, I am a divine feminine male. And part of the process of my journey was to balance out equally my energy between my feminine energy as well as my masculine energy. This was a pivotal part of my journey. I'm pointing to me because this is my journey that I had to experience. It was an important part of my journey because I have been fighting off my levels of intuition, love, the nurturing, the caregiving, my my feminine energies i've always pushed them off to the side because my role models and looking at men 
didn't express themselves. And that's been a battle between, well, that's been a battle all my life. You know, part of my trauma was I was made fun of because I was so sensitive and that I would, you know, I would cry a lot and my, I, I had feelings, you know, I have, I got real life feelings and I wasn't afraid to express them. And for the longest, the role models that I had, as far as men, they didn't express themselves, you know? So I'm looking at my, my figures, my role models at the time. And it was in my psyche that I was supposed to act and be like them. You know, I'm supposed to not cry. I'm supposed to keep my head up and I'm supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Um, have this demeanor of, you know, just masculine macho energy. And so when I went through my warfare, there was so much. And what I realized was my within my warfare, the the cup of feminine energy tipped over and it was just like, you're going to have it all now. You're going to have it all. And it's and it was a way of saying not only you're going to have it all, you're going to accept that you're going to have it all, meaning that I'm going to accept that I am you know, um, I am sensitive. I am loving. I am caring. I am nurturing. And these are all the qualities that I am now and that I do embrace. But before I had such a hard time and it's been a battle off and on, off and on throughout my 38 years of living, you know? And so it was a fight. It was like one of the biggest fight. I'm not going to cry. It was one of the biggest fights because it was like, I, I genuinely it was like I didn't know who I was, you know, and so when I was going through the actual process and the actual thoughts within my head, and mind you, what typically happens is you know you're you you start having these intrusive thoughts. And so they started to get the best of me. And, you know, I was questioning and I was, it was, it was, it was a rough time, but it was a necessary time. And I'm very thankful that I pushed through and I persevered and I've made acceptance of who I am. You know, I am Devonair Mathis. I am sensitive. I am a man. I am gay. You know what I'm saying? I I genuinely love love, you know. I have a very much so masculine exterior, but you know, deep down inside, I'm sensitive as all get up, and that's okay. That's okay. Because what you see is what you get now take it or leave it. And that's where I'm at. And that's part of the warfare that I had to experience. <sighs> I was going to say, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry for crying, but it's just like, it was really rough. It was really rough. So, um, I'm just really happy that I got over that hump and it was hard. It was hard. And what made it more hard was I was seeking external uh, validation during my warfare and in my mind I was like oh I am supposed to be a woman you know I am supposed to live my life as a woman because I do have so much of these traits you know what I mean and but it was like when I finally just stopped and just looked within and kept asking myself is that what I genuinely want for myself and the answer is no <laughs> the answer is no, you know, but that's, that's, that's my truth. And I'm okay with that. But it was, it was necessary because, you know, you have to go through the shadow. There's so much spiritual warfare to me is a lot about the shadow and it's a lot about embracing the shadow. And it's a lot about the things that you sweep under the rug that finally have to come out and you have to address them, you know, and once you address them, you create balance within your life. You know, they're not supposed to be my shadow isn't 
something that I'm, I'm not going to hide anymore. Like these are certain things that have happened to me or that I've experienced, but I'm in a space now within my journey to talk about it and how I overcame it. So yeah, spiritual warfare fucked me up, <laughs> but it's, it was necessary. And I am in ways, I don't want to say thankful, but I am thankful that I had to endure this part of the journey. You know, for many are called and only few are chosen. And so I definitely consider myself someone who persevered this experience. And I'm really happy that I can share it from a place of light and not live, live within the dark of it, you know, because I mean, a lot of people talk about how, you know, they've gone through hell and back. Yes, I've gone through hell and back. However, I'm in a space right now where I, I just have to share it because, again, once you opened, once you open the door to healing, you're allowing things to fester up that have been bottled up and swept under the rug for however long you've been on this planet. And so you have to be able to be okay with accepting and opening up within that dark part of yourself. You, because, you know, like I said, I talk about duality all the damn time. Again, I will not stop talking about duality because we live a life of full duality. And so my darkness, I'm now in a space of light because I can share my darkness and how I've overcome it. Some of the common signs that you will occur within spiritual warfare tends to be the unexplained fears, reoccurring negative thoughts, feelings of doubt, and this increase uh, in challenges that you face within your reality. For me, there was a lot of the intrusive thoughts that, you know, again, was festering up to the surface. And instead of me looking within to find the answers, I was seeking a lot of my answers externally. And that was through other people who shared a similar experience as me, um, TikTok, social media, all of these outlets. When the outlet was right here the entire time, literally my heart. And so there was a time where I had to literally just ask myself because, you know, I've, I've shared with you my, my core affirmations. I love myself. I honor myself. I value myself. I trust myself. And so that's when I started to develop those affirmations for, for myself or within and ask myself these questions. Is this what I really want for myself? Or do I want this because I'm seeing that everybody else has it and this is how they're living their life? Well, when I switched it and I started to look within, that's when I realized, oh, my journey is my journey. Their journey is their journey. You know, so their reality is their reality. This is mine. And so that's when I guess everything kind of switched and warfare didn't become so difficult within my reality because I was really asking myself these internal questions and trying to de develop and figure out if this is something that was going to make me, you know, who I am and make me fulfill and live a happy, healthy life. And so um, the attacks definitely started to occur when they became more direct. And if it wasn't somebody living an experience, it was somebody telling that this is what, this is the reason why you're doing X, Y, and Z, you know? And then it, it's different, you know, the, the, the perspective changes. So here I am listening to everybody else and I'm like, oh, so, okay, because I'm having this kind of a thought, it's because this is why. And I'm trusting that this person or this outlet or this video or this post is the reason why. <laughs> no, no, 
no, I, I stopped doing that. I because it started to become a mind fuck for me. It was like the biggest mind fuck, you know. And then I started looking into tarot and some of the tarot that I started to look in um look with look some of the tarot that I started to look into genuinely in a way I was starting to become addicted to it and truly honoring and trusting that they're they had the key to my life and it's like first off these readings are collective, okay? They're collective, so you take what resonates. But here I am taking all the information. And so I started to take all the information, and I started to just really create more warfare within my reality that was unnecessary. And so, again, I eliminated all of this when I finally sat with myself and said, I'm going to truly trust how I feel. You know, I'll ask myself a question. If I feel a certain way, that's the answer that I'm going to receive. Or that's the answer toward the question. So, you know, perfect example. When I said, do me living my life as a woman, would that fulfill me? I started to feel like, no, no, it's not. I like I like this avatar. I genuinely love this avatar. I've had so much fun with this avatar. I don't want to change this avatar. This is the avatar. I mean, of course, I'm going to grow my hair out. But you know what I'm saying? But like, that's also me, uh, sidebar, me growing my hair out right now, that's a whole thing about me balancing my, men, my masculine and feminine energy. I've always wanted to grow my hair out. I just want to have the experience one time. Once I do it, I'm cutting this bitch off. I'm going right back to regular schedule programming. <laughs> but it's just, you know what I mean? Because that's where I'm at now because I'm so comfortable with who I am and and my masculine and feminine energies. But before, it was, I am a gay male. I had to live a masculine life and nothing feminine sh should ever come out. Uh, that's not me living a truth. That's not, that's not me living in within my truth. And so that's why the balance, you know, when I said earlier, the, 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 the cup spilled, the feminine energy to, to, to balance me out, to balance who I am and what I come with, you know? So yeah, looking within is very crucial when you do experience warfare and trusting yourself. And when you start to look within, it makes it a little bit easier, actually not even a little bit, a lot easier because the answers are within. They've always been within. I can't stress enough the importance of spiritual practices within your reality and your journey and how important they are to keep you in a balanced state. Meditation, journaling, affirmations, grounding, taking care of the mind, taking care of the body, taking care of the soul, listening to music, yoga. There's so many different practices out there and that are available to you. My biggest recommendation is always try try them all and curate what works for you because there are certain things that work for me that may not work for you. You know, I've always used to encourage people to go work out, go work out. Certain people just don't want to work out. I mean, that's fine. But they would rather do like yoga. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, that's still technically taking care of your body. So that is fully acceptable. Whereas I genuinely like yoga. I genuinely lift weights like heavy weights. Yeah, just curating mindful practices that work for you. Like I said, I've, I do a lot of things. And what I've noticed is I've developed a lot of new practices within my journey over the years. You know, so like before it was just strictly gym. Now it's like gym, meditation, yoga, grounding. And when I say grounding, I'm literally putting my toes 
my little tutters, <laughs> my little nuggets in the ground, in the soil. You know what I'm saying? And I'm connecting with earth. Hell, I actually, um, I hug trees. <laughs> I don't think I've ever shared that with anybody. Like when I go on my little walks, I like to touch the trees and I hug them. I ask for their permission. And then if I get a yes, I'll give them a hug. But I acknowledge that I see them and that they've been here well before my time and anybody else's time that's currently on this planet. So just being aware and mindful of my surroundings. But um, yeah, mind, body, soul is very important, especially to eliminate the potential occurrence of a spiritual warfare within your reality. Oh, I completely forgot developing a level of affirmations for yourself, you know, having these affirmations are tuning self, they're tuning within. You know, they're affirming who you are, you know. So I, I I say affirmations on a consistent basis all day, every day. Sometimes I'm I'm adjusting people's verbiage. If I hear them say it a certain way and I'm just like, uh 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 no, we're gonna say it like this because it has more power. And so um that's exactly what it is. Affirmations carry so much power within. And when you continuously say them in rep repetition, they start to not only affect your internal, but they definitely reflect your external. You know, this journey that we've embarked on, we are spiritual beings, again, having a human experience. We are breaking free from limitations we are breaking free from the matrix we are tapping into our ultimate personal power we are all powerful individuals and what what you'll experience within this part of having full acceptance that you're going to trust yourself and this journey the spiritual journey, I should say, is that there comes a lot of test. And when I first started, I thought that the tests were only in the beginning. And once the test, <laughs> I'm sorry, I... <laughs> because I'm just thinking about so many times. Anyway, <laughs> what happens is you're going to be tested day in and day out. And what I was saying earlier was when I was going through my spiritual process, I thought that part of the initiation was just the test in the beginning. And then once you pass, they're done. No, <laughs> no. And so what you start to develop as you're going through it, you know, your journey is you start developing techniques that work for yourself that keep you in a balanced state that keep you on the right side of the pendulum, you know, turning a negative into a positive. And so even to this day, you know, I'm tested, you know, I was tested the other day. I, w I went to a, I went out with, I told you about my homegirl Jasmine in the last episode, I went out with her to go have a sai out in Studio City. And that day was just a cluster. We had the earthquake. There was um, a discrepancy with my credit card. Long story short, somebody did fraud on my credit card. And um, I was trying to do a good deed for my friend when we went to have a sai. And <laughs> I was trying to throw her food away because she had just finished it. And the napkins flew all over the place. Everybody's looking at me. And I'm just like, okay. But one thing that I did do was I stopped in my tracks and I looked up at the universe and I said, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to react. But I'm not going to react. I'm going to turn this what into so what. 
And I went about my day and I went about my business. And oddly enough, which is really crazy or not crazy, nothing's crazy. The next day was a great day. In fact, I received two auditions and I was just like, oh, you know, but I say that to say keeping your energy, your energy is expensive. I say that about myself. My energy is expensive and your energy is expensive. You didn't come this far just to come this far and not be happy. So when little things like that try to steer you off, you already know that these little things are going to try to steer you off. There's no such thing as coincidences because everything happens for a reason. And everything that happens, that happens for you, you know? So I have this clear understanding now and I do my best every day and remember I'm not perfect and I don't desire to be perfect because the polarity is we are spiritual beings having a human experience you see the, du the, the, the you see the duality in that and I said there's a duality in everything and so I do my best to try to stay on the right side. And when I said the right side, that's the good side, the positive, uh, the positive side of life. And I do my best not to just get tested or not get tested, but I do my best to not react because that's the ultimate test right there. Are you going to react? Are you going to fall under pressure when shit hits the fan are you going to turn your what into so what? And for me, I'm going to turn the what into so what. One thing that I want to make sure that I address within spiritual warfare is the, the faith, the role of faith and trust that comes with this experience. I do hope that you are, just as much as I'm doing for myself, Trusting yourself, honoring yourself, valuing yourself, and forgiving yourself, and giving yourself the grace. Giving yourself the grace. I say this all day, every day. And sometimes I have to give myself the physical reminder. And when I say physical, like really out loud, like, okay, I got to give myself grace. I got to give myself grace. I got to give myself grace. Because the world is already hard enough on us. And the last thing that we need to be doing is being hard on ourselves. Essentially, this whole process is us finding ourselves, you know, finding our way back. And we have to be we have to be nurturing to ourselves. We have to love ourselves. You know, we have to give ourselves that grace when we do mess up. Understand that that's OK. And with the mess up, there comes a lesson. And so as long as we've learned the lesson, we can just move on. We forgive and move on, but we don't dwell. We do not hold on to the past. We continue to move forward. Holding on to the past is literally, it's a weight. It's an anchor for our development. And it's not allowing us to become our ultimate fullest potential. And so having that level of faith within yourself and having that level of faith within yourself and trusting within a higher power, whatever it is that you, you know, you represent. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, I say that because that's, this is a crucial part of the process. That's going to wrap up our episode on spiritual warfare. We talked about what it is, the importance of it, the awareness, having that high level of, well, not high level, but having that awareness around it, the signs of a spiritual warfare and the tools and strategies. I really do hope that some of my personal experiences will be able to help guide you within your own personal journey. So you're able to take what resonates and apply it to, again, your own personal journey and create tools and strategies and tips that will help you because at the end of the day you know this is your journey mine is mine and yours is yours but at the in the end it's about us finding our ultimate power and being the best versions of ourselves so I really do hope that you're able to 
seek within answers and when you feel doubtful, trusting yourself and understanding that those feelings that occur when, you know, making a decision, those feelings are real. Those feelings are, you know, your intuition. Those feelings are guides that help you along your journey. So trust that. Honor that. If you enjoyed what you've heard, please consider subscribing or following me on your favorite podcast platform. And if you really loved it, please leave me a review because it helps me reach more listeners like you. I still can't get over the fact that that rhymes. And I'm going to keep saying that. (laughs) Reach out to me on social media. And that's the high dev perspective. That's on Instagram. Um, You can also reach out to me on my personal pages and my social media, which is just my name at Debonair Mathis. And that's both on TikTok and Instagram. I don't bite. Hit me up. Lastly, if you have a topic you want me to cover or a question that you want me to answer, please shoot me an email at thehighdevperspective at gmail.com. I might feature your question in an upcoming episode. So I think next week I want to discuss a little bit about radical forgiveness. So be on the lookout for that episode. I think that's a really good one. It's going to be vulnerable. I mean, the whole podcast is pretty much vulnerable, but... So, yeah, I want to share um, some personal stories regarding radical forgiveness and how that's important within this journey. So thank you again for being a part of this experience. Thank you so much for listening today. And again, stay curious, stay inspired and keep being awesome. I love you so much. Okay, bye.